Spring Preppers in, y'all. Um, I was just watching this video. Somebody was trying to talk about um, flooding, right? And uh, I, I don't have no problem with people's perspectives, but you really don't know much about anything unless you've gone through it yourself, to be honest with you. You could study all day long, to be honest with you. You could study be a doctor. I mean, it prepares you, you know. Don't get me wrong. Knowledge is power. But until you get in that operating room and you actually operating and you're starting to see what it is, that's when that uh, real life experience kick in. That's when uh, the real deal kick in, I say that. I'm trying to word everything properly. Um, it's just like when I started doing sales. I say sales. They teach us all day long on how to sell, how to rebuttal, how to um, disposition your calls how to do follow-ups, how to do emails, how to call back, how not to take no for an answer, how you going to get by 500 no's and only two or maybe one yes, if not that day, in, within that week of all the calls you make and how you keep going and you don't let that deter you or stop you. You know, they, you, you learn all these things. They say it well, right? But you really don't have the... It, the knowledge, you don't gain the right knowledge in it all until you actually get on that phone <laughs> and you start making those calls and you start hearing those people curse you out or telling you no all day and you having to rebuttal, you know what I'm saying? So experience to me is the best teaching. So I said all that to say this. I've been in a many floods, many hurricanes, not many tornadoes. I experienced a bad one last year. People around me died uh, in my neighborhood. I saw houses turned, flipped over. Big trees landed in people's houses, killed some people in the house, tore down the whole house. I've seen this mostly all my life, living here in Texas and in the South, right? And when I tell you, it is nothing to play with y'all. On my way to Houston about a month ago, coming through Lake Charles and Alabama and through the south, it was a spontaneous hurricane just abruptly just came. I'm talking about we was in the midst of a hurricane. The the um, lights were going, I mean, the phones, the alarms on the phones were going off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tornado, tornado, take heat, take warning, blah, 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 right? And they usually only tell you this when it's going on or right before it hit, like 20, 30 seconds before it hit. And... <sighs> Where we were, those houses were almost damn near under the water. True story. Cars were under the water. Lake Charles have been through so many different floods and stuff. I don't see how people even live there. People can say that to me too about Houston. Because it's been so much flooding and excessive hurricanes. And especially during hurricane season, which we're approaching now. I think we're in hurricane season now. Now I think about it. But I know it really is it's here it's really, really uh, near. But um, I've seen it coming through Alabama. Tornado just boom, hit Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, Texas. I've been to so many of them. I could tell y'all all about them. They're nothing to play with. And if you haven't experienced this level of a natural disaster, I will be the first to inform you, get prepared for it. Because all we're seeing nowadays, mostly, with the exception of everything that's going on with the pandemic, with the crime, and you know all this other stuff are natural disasters. I'm telling y'all, you have to prepare yourselves. Some of us in Texas and Houston, we have boats, canoes, life rafts, life, um, life vests, um, you know, um, all types of swimming, <laughs> uh, swimming materials that you would use if you were going to the pool or to the beach. Um, we've, I've even seen people take their blow up beds and have to escape where they are and just get on the blow up bed and just float to the nearest land. You know, I'm telling y'all that so y'all can start preparing, telling you this so you can start preparing yourselves. I have 
a video. I haven't released it yet, but it's called Be Prepared to Lose Everything. One of the viewers was so mad at me, and I was like, no, I'm not fear-mongering. I'm telling the truth. You know why? I've been in these situations where you will lose everything in a flood. Y'all get ready for the floods, I'm telling you. Um, the water is so nasty. During Hurricane Harvey, the flood, the flooding was so excessive to there was dead bodies coming floating out of the cemetery, coming out of the ground. The water was so contaminated. We didn't have water for a long time. We didn't have lights for a long time. The whole city becomes disabled. You can't get to a job, so hang it up. The grid is off. Everything's down. You can't, if you don't have cash, you're in trouble. Because I remember even the stores were opening like a week later and there were still no lights in the stores, you know, so all the refrigerated stuff, of course, they had to throw it out. There were hardly any non-perishable foods on the shelves. That's why you don't wait for stuff like this to happen before you stack up on food and water. You already have those things. So whatever was left, People was grabbing it left and right. It was long, long. It'll be long, 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 long lines. Long lines outside the door. By the time you get up to the front, it's hardly nothing. Then when you go to the cash register, all they take is cash. They're not taking any EBT cards, any credit cards. All they're taking is cash. Same thing for the gas pump going to the gas station after a flood or a natural disaster. Lines all long. Y'all go back to some of my videos back in February during the Texas freeze. Y'all gonna see all these long, long lines. All at McDonald's, everybody trying to get something to eat. Food running out. I'm telling you, it's the craziest experience I've ever experienced in my life. One time, People, I mean, one time, even at the gas station, people fighting over gas. People trying to skip each other to get gas. Like, right before these storms hit, and if you find out about it, enough time when you get out of the city, there's, there's gridlocks on the freeway where you can't even leave where you are. I'm telling you, it is no joke. I was so mad with the city officials during her, right before Hurricane Harvey and doing Hurricane Harvey because the mayor of Houston telling everybody, stay in Houston, we're going to wear it out. It's going to be all right. We'll have all the resources you need. How do you have the resources you need and the people can't get to the resources or the resources can't get to people? When, when you know of these types of things about to happen in your area, get the hell out of that area. I'm telling you, don't try to stay there and wear it out because you could lose your life like that. When you have sick elderly people like I did at the time when my mom, you know, she um, she sees doctors two or three times a month and, you know, got all these illnesses under doctor's care. You have sick loved ones who are on oxygen and go to dialysis on a daily basis. You They can't be there in that kind of city when that type of thing happened. Everything shuts down and their life depends on that oxygen and, and going to dialysis. You have to get out of that area before it happens and be in a place where they can get the care that they need. I'm telling y'all, please listen to what I'm saying. I was so upset. The mayor said stay in the city. Governor Abbey was saying, if I was y'all, I'd get out of Houston. I'll get out of Texas for a couple of days. He was saying this. No, he said for a couple of weeks if you can. People with money at that time got the hell out. They already knew what it was. Everybody else listening to the mayor, and the mayor put a lot of people in a bad, bad situation. This is why I tell y'all, you have to listen to your first mind. You have to listen to your conscience. You have to look at the weather. You got to see for yourself. You know, I, I like Weatherman Plus because he tell you ahead of time in David Slaughterhouse. These local, these local weather channels, they're going to tell you a day before or uh, shit, a couple of hours. I'm telling you. And if you see that it's going to be bad, if you feel in your spirit it's going to be bad, get you and your family out of there. It could be hurricane, tornado, uh, flooding. I'm telling you, get out of there if you can. And don't wait till the, the last minute. During the Texas winter storm, all the lights went out. All the hotels were booked within an hour or two. There was no hotels you could go to. 
I'm telling you, I'm giving y'all some very great, some very good information because these storms are hitting back to back to back to back. And if you are in your house and you're not in a flooded area, the best thing for you to do, if you have gas, try to have places to have gas because a lot of times during these storms, a lot of people were still able to cook and to stay warm with gas stoves. I wouldn't, I'm not telling anybody to run that gas stove overnight while it's cold in the house, because that could be another problem with carbon monoxide. But I'm just saying that having gas is such a great, a, such a great thing, especially with during them storms. You lose all your food. You, and then the main important thing that you guys have to realize you on your own. Nobody can come get you. And if they can, they're not trying to. They have their own families. Like for this Texas winter storm, couldn't nobody even get to you. It was ice all on the roads, ice everywhere. You have to remember these things and you have to prepare your mind and body for these things. You know, this is why I always say, don't store all your preps in one place. People were talking down on me because I didn't have a lot of my preps on me during the Texas winter storm. I didn't. I'm a single woman. I travel a lot. I don't leave all my stuff in one place. I had some things on me. I didn't have everything on me. But you want to have the things that you need. You truly do. At all times. But you don't want to have everything stored at one place. So many people lost their homes. They lost all the preps inside their homes. If they were preppers, I've heard preppers say this during that Texas winter farm, a storm and during te uh, Hurricane Harvey. They had everything on one property. And I know, you know, everybody can't afford to have a storage or, you know, another place where they hide, you know, put things up, you know, but I'm just, I'm just giving you guys some really good pointers, man, because I've been through this stuff so many times. And then insurance people, if you have insurance, if you have home insurance, try to have home insurance. Try to have flood insurance. I think flood insurance is very cheap. Get that stuff now. Don't wait. Always have car insurance if you can because people who lost their cars, the insurance company, you were able, if the insurance company didn't pay y'all right away, FEMA did. I don't know if FEMA um, are as fast as they used to be. I know they're not. Because back in the day, FEMA would come and assess your house in Houston and you get about four or $5,000. Or if you lost more than that, they would give you more. But now those payouts are not like that no more, y'all. The insurance company, and if you have car insurance, FEMA going to pay for you a whole nother car. I'm telling you, I've seen this happen with people. One time when I wasn't doing so well financially, I didn't have insurance on my car. And I wasn't really driving my car around. And because that one of storms hit, I lost my car. My car was damaged. I couldn't get any compensation for it because I didn't have insurance on it. I need to be listening to what I'm saying. And if you have to, write it down. Because this is what's about to happen to a lot of us. I'm telling you, with these storms and these floods and these tornadoes and hurricanes just popping up in areas that have never popped up before like they did in New York. A couple of weeks ago, and that, and that flood station got flooded. You saw them people playing in that nasty water. That's another thing. You don't want to mess with that water. That water is nasty. I've seen, I've seen people die behind messing with that water. So the public water system gets shut down. It, the water be so filthy, y'all. The grid is down. It's really bad and nasty. Can't nobody get to you. You can't hardly get to nobody. You know? I've seen them do a couple of rescues, like people in helicopters rescue only a certain amount of people because they can't rescue everybody. You need to find out if you are in a low zone area, if you are in a flood area. If you're in a flood area, I would try to move away from that. If you're near big bodies of water and you're in a flood area, you're in trouble. That's what happened to Galveston. Now, Galveston have a seawall over 100, a little bit over 100 years ago. So many people died in Galveston near the beach, because all that water started flooding into the neighborhoods. Those houses were buried under the, under the water. A lot of people in these coastal areas, y'all better start getting yourself prepared, get a boat, canoe, get do what you gotta do. I'm telling you, because it's coming. 
I'm just trying to think right now. I know, you know, when I look look back and listen to this video, I know it's going to be some things that I've missed out on. Because I'm telling y'all, it's just so much. If you have babies, if you have newborn babies and you have little toddlers, start getting them some, some um, what you call a swimming life jackets, you know, like when they go swimming, the floaties, and get them all that types of stuff, all those types of things. Don't wait. I'm telling y'all, last minute you in your house and the floods start reaching to your door and you start seeing water come up, you know, have a type of furniture where you, you know, um, it won't just get soaked up and be all nasty. I, you know, like I have this furniture here, but usually I don't have this type of furniture. I have like wooden furniture, to be honest with you. Stuff like a, a futon. Well, only thing that I lose is like that, that the, um, what do you call it? The, the, you know, the thing you lay on, you know, I don't know why my, my, my mind does that sometimes. Like the little mattress on the futon, you know, the, the futon, the metal and stuff can withstand the water. I don't have a lot of furniture in my houses in places I stay now because of the floods and the hurricanes. telling you because people lose everything all their furniture all their clothes and shoes and paperwork and documents and pictures because they have all this stuff in one place and then they didn't take the time to research the area they in and see if it's in the flood area and there's no need of trying to rebuild where somewhere that it flooded because nine times out of ten it's going to flood again there i've seen a lot of people do that and then the, the food in the stores they sell you be spoiled and be nasty. Y'all, I'm telling you, man, just try to keep some non-perishables and have you some ways of purifying your water, you know? If you got to get those 40-gallon barrels, get those and store you some water. If you have safe pla places to store some gas, you know what I mean? And uh, don't wait till the last minute to get out of an area that you know there's by a tornado about to hit or hurricane about to hit. Those things are nothing to play with. And if you can afford to get out, get out. Don't stay there. Be wise. Be very wise. I hope this helped. This information helps somebody. Keep surviving. Zanhara.com.